These are Christian reflections, and therefore not about love, but about the works of love. They concern the works of love, not as if all its works were herein enumerated and described, far from it, not as if the particular works herein described were now described once for all, praise God that this is impossible, for that which in its whole wealth is essentially inexhaustible is also in its least expression essentially indescribable, because it is essentially present everywhere in its wholeness, and essentially incapable of being described. A self-denial of a merely human scope reasons as follows. Give up your selfish wishes, dreams, and plans, and you will be honored and respected and loved as just and wise. It is not difficult to see that this form of self-denial does not reach God, but remains on the worldly plane of a relationship between men. Christian self-denial reasons as follows. Give up your selfish wishes and desires. Give up your selfish plans and purposes. Become the servant of the good in true disinterestedness of spirit and prepare to find yourself hated and scorned and derided just on that account, precisely as if you were a criminal. Or rather, do not merely prepare to find yourself in this situation for that may be necessary, but choose it of your own free will. For Christian self-denial knows what will happen beforehand and chooses the consequences voluntarily. Human self-denial rushes into danger without regard for the consequences, but the danger into which it rushes is one in which honor awaits the victor and the admiration of his fellow men beckons the daring hero and urges him on. It is easy to see that this form of self-denial does not reach God, but it is delayed on the way, losing itself in the relativities of human life. Christian self-denial also rushes into danger without regard for the consequences, but the danger is one which the environment cannot interpret as yielding any honor to the victor, because the environment is itself blinded, ensnared, guilty. Thus the Christian is confronted by a double danger, for the derision of the spectator awaits the hero, whether he wins or loses. To love one who makes me happy is viewed in reflection, an imperfect form of love, to love one who from motives of malevolence makes me unhappy is virtue. But to love one who makes me unhappy because he loves me, and hence by a misunderstanding, but nevertheless really makes me unhappy, that is a form of love which to my knowledge has never yet been described. A form of love, nevertheless, which when viewed in reflection is revealed as the normal form of love. 